Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and I'm going to make a miniature landscape out of fabric and apply it to a piece of card stock and make a card. The card stock that I'm using is going to be folded trifold, and so this will the landscape will go in the center part. That way, if I sew on it, I can close it and the stitches won't show. This is actually for Visions Art Museum is doing a challenge right now for cards that will be given to care facilities if they'll allow it and to because those people right now if you know when this you can notice the date this is published um, can't have visitors so that's what this project is about so I just did a simple line drawing and this just happens to be in card stock it could be on anything I have drawn it with a black marker so that I can see it better. Uh, you'll need scissors for paper and for fabric. You may want to use, I have a rotary cutter for the straight edges, I'll show you how that could be used. But scissors are just fine. And you'll need freezer paper, the same size as your landscape. It's shiny on one side and that will be the side that we iron down and dull on another side. You'll need as many different fabrics as there are pieces. So I'll have a sky, a sun, a, a background mountain a little bit closer, and then a foreground piece. You'll need So you'll need different fabrics for that. And I have selected some here. And you'll need a piece of, um, you don't have to use this, but I would suggest it. This is parchment paper, so that when I use the fusible, I maybe won't ruin my iron. And then you'll need what I'm using is Wonder Under 805. And I have a piece that's a, at least the size of my landscape, and then I have another piece that'll be for my son because that's a separate piece going on top. This will go together like a puzzle. I do my landscapes. I've been making miniature landscapes out of fabric for years and years, and uh, they're usually hand applique. This is just going to be fused and layered like a puzzle. So much easier and a lot of fun. So I've, I've selected my fabric, but before I use that, I'm going to take my freezer paper, and I will first take the small piece and make a pattern. So I'm gonna, I have to make sure I have the shiny side down on top of my mat, this is my master. And uh, before I do that, I'm gonna number this. So my background sky would be one, and then the sun can be two, and then the mountain that is furthest back that has other pieces on top of it, that will be three. And then this piece will be four. And I put either a pound sign or a dot by them because these little pieces, when they're on the pattern and they get lost or dropped, or I should say dropped or turned around, um, it helps to have the number and the dot so that you can see which direction it's going in. And then this foreground land will be five on this piece. I'm going to take my first little bit of freezer paper and I'm going to go around my sun. And you could use a coin or use, it can be any size you want. You can use many different things. You could use the top of a cap and go around it. So look around for something if you don't want to just freehand draw it. It won't matter if it's not a perfect circle. It gives it more personality. So then for my, um, the rest of my piece, I'm going to lay my freezer paper on top. And I sometimes cut it just a little teeny bit larger around the outside because uh, you can always cut the fabric away and it's easier than having to cut your card down. Then I'm just going to trace over my mountains. If you can't see through this, you could put it up to a window. If you have a light box, you could use a light box. The freezer paper is pretty thin, so you can usually see uh, through it. Then after I get this drawn, I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to number it. And I didn't notice I didn't put my son, draw my son on there because I, I can put the sun anywhere I want after the fact. So I'll just number the rest of the pieces. Okay, then I'm going to take those and cut them out with my paper scissors.
And I'm going to cut this little bit of this mountain down here off. So then I have my sky and my mountains numbered so I know where they go. Just like a little puzzle. And I'll move my, I'll keep my master here even though it's a few pieces. It's still good to look at it in case you get confused about where, what goes where. <clears throat> I will cut my son out. This could be a moon. You could make it a nightscape. So for my son, I just have a kind of cool piece of batik, and you can see through this uh, this freezer paper a little bit. So it's uh, I don't know if it shows on camera that you can, but you can see through it a little bit, and so you can sort of put it where you want. If there's lines through your fabric, like there is with this one, I'm going to slide my iron over here so you can see better what I'm doing. So I'm going to move my wonder under out of the way for a second here. Okay, and I'm going to start with my sky. Well, I can just, I can do my sun really fast um, first. And right now I'm not using the fusible. So right now all I'm doing is using the fabric and the freezer paper. And I don't know if I want that line going through there. I'm going to just put this right on the edge. And you wouldn't have to use the parchment paper for this because you can tell the drawing, where your drawing is on this is the top. And it's not the, the uh, gluey part, the waxy part, I'll say, of the freezer paper. So that's not going to hurt your... You'll know it's, no, it's not the part that's going to touch your iron. And I'll cut that out in a minute. For right now, I'm just going to do the other pieces. So I have a piece of sky, and this is actually hand-painted sky that I painted. And uh, this would have been the front, but I like the back better on this. The cloudy part shows up a little bit better. So I'm going to use the back as the front. Hopefully that's not too confusing. And I'm going to lay, do I want to do it that way? Yeah, I'm going to lay this on here. And when it's the top edge, I try to get it straight. It's not that big a deal, but it's a little less fraying if you lay it on the straight of grain. And I'm going to press this. And so we're just doing the freezer paper onto the fabric. Press it on as fast I can because I want it to hold while I'm cutting the piece out. And there are a lot of different ways to do this, and if you're familiar with using these materials, you may want to do it a different way as far as you might want to put the freezer paper, uh, the uh, Wonder Under on and not even worry with the, do the freezer paper. It's up to you, but this is just the way I do it. I'm comfortable doing it this way, and it works for me. But it's good to learn as many different ways as you can so that you can do it the way that fits, fits you best. This one... I do want, let's look at my master from in here. I do want kind of the lighter parts at the top if I can achieve that. So I'm looking on here and I see this is kind of a lighter part. And if I get that on the top of that mountain, I'll be happy with that. So you kind of fussy cut it a little bit. Again, it's such a tiny card, it won't be that, won't matter that much. Press it on nice and hot. I have a hot dry iron in case I didn't mention that. For piece number five, I was going to use this floral fabric that brings it foreground it's larger and when I laid it against what will be my mountains it just didn't speak to me there's just not enough contrast so that's out I decided to use this grass fabric <laughs> because I like that contrast now that really works for me so I'm going to go ahead and I cut this out ahead of time and I'm going to put my freezer paper back on top of this and I did um, cut this out well I'll show you as I cut the others out just a second When I cut the first piece out, which is the furthest back piece, I'm going to cut this leaving about an eighth of an inch around the bottom. So I'm going to go past the paper pattern about an eighth of an inch. That way, when I stack my next piece on it, which will be the mountains, that this will layer under it a little bit. If you have a light piece of fabric and you're doing that, this this little sort of seam allowance will show can show through this, so you might not want to do that. In the past, I have gone where I've cut really big and kind of sweeping. That way, if it shadows through to my mountains, it sort of just looks like shadows or or a darker part of the mountain, and it works out just fine. Now, for this straight edge, I can use the rotary cutter, 
and I'm not going to because I have a lot of stuff here in the way so I'm going to just cut it by hand but it makes it very easy to do that and I sometimes cut just a little bit outside the paper because I didn't do it there but uh, because you can cut the it's easier to cut the paper trim the paper off than to cut the card and get it to fit nicely but if I have to I'll cut the card a little because I'm cutting really close to the paper here so and this might be easier to do with smaller scissors these are pretty big This is kind of a good project to do if you haven't done fabric landscapes. It's kind of a good way to start it. And I sometimes cut out several, like I might cut out sky in a darker sky or a, a smoky sky, a deserty orangish sky. And then you have all those pieces cut and you can build a whole bunch of little landscapes uh, with the same pattern and they will look totally different. And that's what's especially fun with making these little landscapes. So I'm going to cut all the pieces out and then we'll come back. Now at this point I could take the freezer paper off of my pieces and layer them up and see if I loved it and if I didn't change the pieces and if I change the pieces I would keep the pieces because then I have the beginning or a whole other landscape. But I'm going to just go ahead and put it together. So what I'm going to do at this point is bring my fusible up and we'll do the sun first. And I'm going to put my fusible with the rough side which is the adhesive side up. And then I'm going to put my fabric piece with the freezer paper on it, fabric side down. And this is where I absolutely want to make sure I'm using uh, not fusible. My, there it is, my release paper or uh, parchment paper in my case. And then I'm going to give it a good press because I want that to bond to the fabric. And that's going to be hot, so we're going to be really careful and just set that aside. Now I'm gonna going to bring my piece up, making sure I have the, the fusible sticky part up, the rough part up, and I'm going to just, this just happens to be big enough so I can lay, I think I should be able to lay all my pieces on here. We'll see, yeah. so that I'll be able to cut them out. Sorry, off camera for a minute there. Just want to make sure they're not overlapping any place. And again with my parchment paper, and I'm going to press firmly. And I'm going to let that cool because that gets really hot. But I'm going to come over here to my sun where it has cooled off. And with the sun, it's a little different than the other ones. I'm going to cut the paper away. Uh, it's easier to do this, I find, with the freezer paper off now. And you can take the paper off first that will probably and then cut it out that will probably cause I'm sorry the paper backing to your um, uh, heat 
to your wonder under. Uh, that will cause the piece to fray less. But because it's going on a card and it's not going to be handled much, I just cut it out with the paper on it. Just realize that paper can mess up or dull your good scissors, so decide if you want to use paper scissors or not. Then once that's uh, cut out, I'm going to bend it, and sometimes you can hear it kind of crack. It's easier with pieces, not quite this tiny. And I'm going to peel that paper away, and then my sun is ready to go on my card front, so I'll set that aside. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of these out while I'm going to peel my parchment off. And I see I have a little bit of a wrinkle here. So I'm going to press that. Um, I'm actually going to take my freezer paper off and see if it's, yeah, on the fabric. That that might be a little problem. I think it might be because my, my Wonder Under may be getting a little bit old. So I'm going to press those again, and we'll see if the wrinkle's there. Hopefully it won't be. So I'm going to, now that they're nice and cool and all cut out, I'm going to slowly, carefully take the pattern, um, the resist paper off of the fabric of each piece. Sometimes you can use a pin on the back to help split it. Split the paper so that it peels off more easily. And I'm going to bring my card back up here. Ooh, static. I'm going to open it out because I know I want this to go on the front in the center. And then just like my drawing, I'm going to start with my sky and line it up on that line up there with the fusible side down. And they kind of stick on here so that's pretty good. That makes it sort of hold in place while you're waiting to press it. I don't want to put my head right over this, so I'm having a little trouble lining it up. And then that wrinkle is out of there. But if there isn't adhesive in there, it, it may bubble up later, so I may want to stitch on it. I think I'm going to go up just a little teeny bit more. And then on, this is when I follow the order, so my son can go wherever I want it to go. It doesn't have to be where I drew it. And then the next piece back, because it does make a difference in layering this. If I put this piece down and then put this on top, it won't look right. So I'll just lay this, remembering that I have a little teeny bit of a seam allowance, but not that much, that I, that I added when I cut that out. So there's this little bit of overlap. And these two pieces are quite similar, but the difference is really, if you look at them, the size. This is larger print, a little bit um, clearer, not so speckly and distant. That helps this have a little more depth. And I think just for the heck of it right now, I'm going to find that fabric piece. I'm going to lay it on there and see if I still don't. 
It's okay. It mushes with this a little too much. It's not too bad here, but you know what? We're going to save that for another one. Let's just do this piece. And I can put it to my bottom line, which brings it up more. I could trim it off, but I think I'm going to scoot it down where it's supposed to be. And then I can either let it uh, fold behind the card or I can trim it off. So you just want to try and make your bottom edge straight. Then if everything is where I want it to be, and I'm liking that, I'm going to go ahead and lay my parchment paper on top. I'm trying to decide if I like that sun right there. You wouldn't think it would matter, but it does. Also, there's kind of a line going through my sun, and I wouldn't really want that to be going uh, up and down vertically. I'd rather it was laying horizontal, sort of like the clouds misting across it. Across it. Okay, so now I'm going to just hit it with the iron. I'm going to do that one more time. My iron wasn't quite as hot as it should be. So when I fold this, if that fabric goes beyond the fold, it's okay. Uh, usually, yeah, that's what happens. It lifts off, and that's okay. If this isn't sticking, I can stick some glue under there. It may be that if I hit it too much earlier, the, the fusible is not working anymore. That can happen, too. So if I feel like it's not sticking, this seems really to be sticking quite well. That's good. And I would flip this over and either cut this with scissors. I would use a rotary cutter because it's a lot easier. And I will do that later. But for now, and then I can flip the card over and I can trim that off as well. But for now, and on the top, the same thing on the top of it, it the fusible will come off so I can cut that down. So what I did for the edge was I did take my, and I've already done this, but I took my ruler and set it along the edge. I'm really sorry about the glare here. And then I used my rotary cutter and I just cut off that very edge of fabric that was past the card. Did that on both sides. Then I got a glue stick that dries clear. And I just went ahead and I held the card closed and I just ran the glue stick first kind of at the bottom, kind of on the top, and then right in about the center. And if it starts to unravel, that means try the other direction. And I did that on all of the sides, and I might let that dry and then do it uh, again if I thought it was necessary. But that kind of gives a nice seal, and that edge isn't going to go anywhere. It keeps it down. And that's why I finished the card. I hope you enjoyed this project. I thank you a lot for being here, and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe, and if you tap the bell, you'll get my next coming videos. This has been Anne. Thanks a lot for watching.